but to confuse matters, they do so to claim to be the oldest one. 1949, the walking tour of Oxford. We got into training to college. That's a view of college. Pretty long. The student houses at Trinity. Place where the students stay during their study period. And we are getting into the chapel now. And uh, like, like all monasteries in Britain, it, uh, it was uh, dissolved by Henry VIII in the middle of the 16th century, or early 16th century, and this college was found in the middle of the 16th century, just after the monastery was dissolved here. Unfortunately, nothing above ground from the, from the uh, Middle Ages. Um, so the monastery uh, once, uh, there are which dissolved by ground, Henry VII. The, the, the chapel at Trinity College. Yeah, do, do come in, do, do make room for everybody. Um, uh, So this is the, the dining hall where the members of the college are fed. Uh, for breakfast and lunch, by the way, there's no formality. You just grab your food in the kitchens, which are on the other side of that green and brown door there. There's a serving area there. So students just uh, stand uh, queue up, grab their food, come and sit down and just get up. Most boarders in, Oxford, in Trinity College are good rowers. This is an indication of that. Inside the courtyard, leading on to the garden. If, if you, any of you think of coming to Oxford to read history, or to read modern history, bear in mind that Julius Caesar is considered modern history. It's modern using Oxford terminology. Over 2,000 years, it's still considered modern in Oxford. Anyway, so, but let's get into the old city. Instead of the more traditional and usual rooster. That's the bridge connecting the Victorian building and the more recent building. You're right. Uh, the one in Cambridge isn't a very good copy either. You see a good copy of the bridge of size and shows the last thing. The best thing about that pub, the very best thing about that pub is that no that tourists period. have a clue there's a pub out there. So you don't have to put up with the noise. You see the bridge which was traditionally used to link the Court of Justice to the gallows. So once a convict was convicted, he would be taken to the gallows on the left hand side and hanged to death. Bill Haley, of the famous Holy's Comet fame lived here during his fellowship walking down the streets of Oxford close the gate. I'm the gatekeeper, I'll close the gate seeking after seeing the new college or rather the outskirts of new college because the new Harry Potter film is being shot inside the college which has a lot of medieval buildings Creatures along the walls. I think they were put up about 200 years ago. Up around 200 years ago. That's pretty recent. All as it's affectionately known became a college 50 years ago um, and kept the name St. Edmund Hall. They also bought that church on the left there that's now the college library. So every college has its own library 
Uh, the Lord Lane, which is closed in the evenings and closed. The library? Um, what else is it closed? Closed most of the weekend, actually. A man called Mr. Blackadder. So Rowan actually got one of his most famous television series, Blackadder, from the name of his college porter. I've got no idea who Mr. Bean was, by the way. <laughs> if you've seen Blackadder, it's about a hundred times better than Mr. Bean. But that's again, that's a personal opinion. But there we go. The Blackadder was an employee of this college, of that college. I was actually playing at the moment, it's a bit of a shame. But, uh, but if you want to, well, it's not open today by the look of it, but uh, usually you can see people playing real tennis here, which is the indoor version of, or the original version. Part of the Martin College. Stepped into Martin College. Into the courtyard, and there's the chapel. We're going in under this bridge. Yes, everyone knows who's with me. Porter's already a bit upset with me. Can you keep off the grass? Keep off the grass. I'm going to get in trouble if it is. Mowing the lawn. And I... Oh, just broke the cardinal rule. Oh, well. Maybe she's a fellow. Anyway. Uh, the cardinal rule is that only fellows can walk on the grass. They're on the right date from that period. Unfortunately, the college isn't open at the weekend. The rest of the college, on the, particularly on the right of the round building there, was added in the 18th century. All souls only for fellows. It's the only college in Oxford that has no students. It's a purely fellowship college. To provide uh, additional reading rooms, two large rooms here, camera means room. And it's a reading room. It's completely empty. It's not because they're filming Harry Potter. It's because the library is actually closed to, uh, to students on Saturday afternoons and all day Sunday. That's one, another big advantage that college libraries have. They take books down to the body in libraries. So the University of Church of St. Mary the Virgin. It is linked, by the way, underground to the new body on the other side of Broad Street. Uh, a lot of people actually think Christopher Wren designed this building. He, he was actually, he was a fellow of all souls, but started in the back of Brasenow. That was founded in the early 15th century. Brasenow, so a century later, You have come a few s full circle and standing outside the gate of Trinity College. That's a view of the college and the lawns just in front of the college. There you get a better view. Oxford Shakespeare Company Open Air Theatre on my left hand side. That's it. Let's see if we can go in and get a snap. That's the Wadham College. And what's on offer in July and September? With Comedy of Heroes, Love's Label Lost. All books printed and produced in country are sent here. Have to be sent, it's mandatory, quite like our national libraries. And then next to it you have the Sheldonian Theatre. who were burnt alive. We'll hear about them later. I'm right now in front of the Ashmolean Museum. I had been inside it. A lot of wonderful collection, particularly from the Roman era. And uh, there are a couple of mummies from Egypt as well. 
the building itself is pretty impressive. There you can have a more detailed look at it. College of St. Christ Church, one of the oldest colleges here. Famous watch which strikes 101 times at 5 past 9 each evening. That's supposed to tell the students it's time to get in inside the college. Why it's 101 times is because there were 100 stu 101 students taken each term. So one dong for each of the students. It was a rule that each person had to spend 56 nights in his bed before he could be allowed to take his exams. That's the story of Christchurch. This church has been home to 13 British Prime Ministers and the great Lewis Carroll. It was the pen name, the actual name was Charles Dodson, who was a mathematics don, and yet he wrote a great novel. That's the map of Oxford. This is old sheep shop mentioned in Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, the place where Alice used to come shopping. Quite a visitor's attraction. Still hoping to catch a glimpse of Alice. We are inside the Christ Church. A little while ago we saw the Tom's Gate. This is called the Meadows Gate. Because you have the vast meadows in front of this. Huge one. Beautiful. Lush green grass. The trees bordering on all three sides. In fact, on all four sides. You can find people taking a nice walk. Or some people lying on the grass. That's Tom's Gate. You can see the students' halls, side of the playing field. That's another view of Christchurch. That's the Museum of Oxford. Now it's evened out, it's increasing, but it's not that Uh, one of the oldest streets of Oxford. On the right hand side is the high street. And then on the on its right hand side is the road through which we came from St. Christ. That's a tower which gives you a good view of Oxford. That's a Three dimension map of Oxford.
the churches at Oxford. Reminds you of one of the churches in Calcutta. That's Queen's College at Oxford. Could hear the bell go for quarter to five. The view from the front. And the three windows. That is Magdalene College. on the doorstep of the famous Rhodes House. This house to two of the famous trusts who administer the famous Rhodes Scholarship for students outside UK, mainly hailing from the colonial countries. And it awards full scholarship. Miguel Perch on top of Rhodes House. <laughs> That's Oxford University Museum of Natural History. <laughs> Church used by the usual people, the good people, standing on Magdalene Street. Dashmolean 
museum there. And the uh, Beaumont Street. And the uh, Antonio Hotels, one of the hotels, the Randolph. And then you have the St. Giles Memorial. Another of those church and spires. No wonder Oxford is called the land of dreaming spires. This is supposed to be the oldest shop in Oxford. And what did it sell? Mobile phones. That's the walking street. The shops on both sides of the road. That was the prison. There's the castle which is being rebuilt into a hotel. The castle had a moat as well and a drawbridge. Castle Mound and opposite to it is the Nuffield College. We have this lovely little bus stop at Oxford. It's about to start off for <laughs> Today, 29th of August, I am at the Notting Hill Carnival, which is celebrating its 40th anniversary. And it also happens to be the 170th anniversary of the abolition of slavery at Trinidad, where the carnival had its origin. You can hear a lot of noise. The carnival is just starting off.
places to see. That's the Patisak sailing boat ship, rather, docked at the Greenwich Maritime Pier. And this is the visitor center. That's the statue of Sir Walter Raleigh. Here you can see men and women dressed in Tudor clothes. Very soon there will be a fencing display. Long time to pick it up. He's a bit slow and a bit effeminate. <laughs> but don't tell him I said that. We're trying to teach him how to use a rapier, which is the fashionable sword of the period. Now, a rapier is very sharp on both sides and the point. You quite easily kill somebody with thrust, and you do them some nasty damage with a cut as well. If you've got strong enough wrists and arms, that is, unlike my good Lord William, who hasn't. Anyway, we should persevere, perhaps with your help, with Elizabeth I. Elizabeth I? Good answer. Anything more than just Elizabeth I? The Armada. Armada. Good answer, sir. Very good answer. In 1588, the Spanish decided that they'd try and invade this great country of ours. William's father, Lord Effingham, who commanded the fleet, the Spanish fleet was routed. Now, Lord Effingham is a good warlike man. He knows how to fight. And right. Knees bent. Let's put my magnificent bike. Magnificent bike. Magnificent cars as well. I've seen a little puny. I've seen better cars by cutting down to the shoulder. On both sides. Cutting across the waist. I can cut upwards. I can cut downwards. And I can cut upwards that a range of swords. Put your buckle in front of you, and if somebody was to thrust at you, if you thrust at me, I move my body out of the way and deflect the blow with the buckler. Like that. Now it's important when you see... Well, very good. That's how good they are. Chingiara, Porta di Ferro. The boar's tooth fighter. Guardia Porta di Ferro, Ferro Lava. And the Cardinal Gun, Lady Stacer. The way of fighting with this, you don't just kill them from a distance. No, no, no. You can come really close in, and once you're in, you can punch him, kick him, especially kick him in the cots. So, good lord, I don't know what a wonderful lord. May not look very aggressive to you. All right, I'll show you slow. Which will take him off his head and cut his neck open. So, here we I'll show you why this is really good. See how he stepped back then. He's a bit afraid. He's a bit of a coward. I don't really think. That's the prime meridian of the world. Zero degrees. There's the clock. It shows the exact Greenwich time. Both Stanley. That's the view from the Royal Observatory. That's Queen's House in the foreground. Next to it is the National Maritime Museum. In back background, you can see the skyline of London. St. Paul's Cathedral. View of Canary Wharf. And the Millennium Dome. Thank you. 
exact, exact measurement of a British yard. Two feet, one foot, six inches. That's the chapel at Greenwich. It shows the directions, north, south, east, west. This is the direction of the wind. As driven by that at the top. And that's the river things flowing by. You can see the Millennium Dome. Description of where things are in this huge courtyard. That's Queen Mary's Court, which is which now houses the University of Greenwich, along with the chapel at this end. That's Queen Anne's Court, which is also part of the University of Greenwich. The one covered in their work is in progress. That's the Trinity College of Music, which is King Charles School. And then just by the side of it, below that watch which shows the direction, wind direction, that's King William's Court, University of Greenwich, which also houses the famous painted wall. That's the Millennium Dome. By the River Thames. And you're seeing from this walk Thames right next to the travel travel the tavern. The history of Greenwich has been very well captured in this millennium plaque. That's what Samuel Johnson said. That's Billingsgate Dock. This is what Charles Dickens had said. Greenwich is also famous for its maritime history. This is what John Meesfield had said. Ships. As we saw before, time begins in Greenwich. This is for setting up of the Royal Astro Observatory in 1674. Christopher Wren had built the Plum Street House that we just saw. The old Royal Naval College. He had been in the grounds of this famous college. We saw the different courts, which houses now the University of Greenwich the painted hall as well as the chapel. Markets. Greenwich is also famous for its markets. This is what it says about the balance and an inscription at the entrance to the Greenwich. On unfairs, Greenwich had always been a place 
of fun and fair right from the days of Henry the Eighth. Charles Dickens. That is how it looks at dusk. The party itself standing in all its glory. There's a private party there, and people have queued up to enter. A greeting couple there. It could be a marriage function or a anniversary celebration. There's the couple being greeted by the guests one by one. <laughs> <laughs> That's Britain's That's Britain's oldest brewer, Shepherd Neem, established in 1698 perhaps, and still going steady. That's a view of Greenwich High Street. And now at the popular railway station of Dockland Light Rails. On my way back from Greenwich, that's the view from the overbridge connecting the two platforms. There in the distance, you can see the Billingsdale, Billingsgate Market, and the huge multi-storied buildings. That the that's the Barclays. Next to it is HSBC and a couple of others. And that's the way to the roads. There you can see the train emerging. emerging. Mind you, the train is without a driver. It's an autopilot. Runs by itself. There's the other train. Heading towards Stratford.
204 in 50 for 10 wickets. That's the score. In this match at large, play resumes at 3 o'clock English time. And there's some entertainment on the ground. You have a band playing. Pitch guarding is on. This is where I'm standing now. That's the pavilion. Allen stand, tavern stand, mount stand, Edridge stand. Edridge stand is the place where I'm sitting. Natvers Media Center. Then on the right hand side you have the Comptom stand, Grand stand and Warner stand. And there you have the nursery ground for which the nursery ground end and you have the pavilion end, the two ends at Lodz. So that's the pavilion which is being repaired now and you can see the scaffolding. This is the Harold Garden, which is more an open air cafe. That's the uh, William Gray's gate. And that's a uh, listing of the stands and which direction they are. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Today is 11th September, September the 11th, a famous date in history now. Three years ago, World Trade Center was bombed, or rather hit by two aircrafts. Today I am at the South Bank. And a view of the bank. Opposite to where I am standing, that's the Waterloo Bridge. If you carefully read what is written here, it says the building behind me is the IBM South Bank, which is the London Marketing Centre of IBM United Kingdom Limited. This building was designed by, for IBM by Sir Dennis Lasden, 
CBE and opened in October 1984 and it shows you the famous landmark buildings and helps you to locate them on the bank opposite that's the map of South Bank which is the Silver Jubilee walkway and this is the IBM office right opposite right alongside River Thames the next door neighbor of this building is the Royal National Theatre And just as we cross that, you have the National Film Theatre. That's the biggest show. Get it so hot the exhibition gives us. And then the Queen Elizabeth Hall, the Royal Festival. I'm standing on the viewing gallery of the Oxford Tower, which is on the eighth floor. And you can get a good view of London. Quite a sunny day. You just saw London Eye. That's Ghurkin, as it is called. Quite a strange shape for a building. I'm now just by the side of River Thames. Again on the viewing gallery of the Opso Tower on the 8th floor. You can see the St. Paul's Cathedral over there. And the bridge is the Blackfriars Bridge is supposed to have been inaugurated by Queen Victoria. There you can see the London City School, which is the old building. And then you have the Xi'an College. And some of the famous landmarks. You can see the telecom tower and the Centre Point building. Centre Point is at Tottenham Court Road. And there's the Waterloo Bridge. It does seem as if the tower is moving. That's the view of the restaurant, which has the beautiful viewing gallery. At this time, I'm standing on the Waterloo Bridge. That's the view of London Eye, and just across is Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament. Strong breeze is blowing across the Thames. That is the festival here. You can see the Royal Festival Hall. And then the That is the Hungerford Bridge, which is also a train bridge. And you can see a train rolling into the Waterloo Station. The Great River Race is also being held today. It runs between Richmond and Greenwich. That looks like the boat which is in the lead. There's another one. It starts from Richmond at around 1.30 and reaches Greenwich by 4.30. This, this is the 17th year of this race. as they come along. Apparently when the race starts off, the slower ones get off first and just to add some spice into the race. Although the ri Great River race is only 17 years old, its origin goes back to the days when there used to be water taxis on the Thames.
During those days, the company of Waterman and Lighterman used to run the water taxis. And they had an annual race, which was called the Doggett's Coat and Badge, started in 1715. As you can see, more boats are emerging from under the bridge. Now, as we were talking about the Doggett's Coat and Badge, it was started in 1715 and is now the longest running sporting event in the world. As you must have noticed, it is a traditional boat championship with coxed craft and fixed seats. And having at least four fours. The boats are coming one by one. There are over 300 of them in 35 different boat categories. Each boat must have a passenger. because somebody has climbed right to the top just like a spider-man climbed up apparently around four o'clock early morning he's protesting an issue and the issue is their father's rights there's an activist group here which claims that fathers have been denied their proper rights Children and fathers are second class citizens while mothers are first class citizens. He's somewhere over there on the other side. You can just see his outline over there. There he is, a real life Spider Man. This is where I am right now. This is how it's going to be. Brickland. It's also known as Brickland Festival, which is held today, 12th September. And we're 
a little before we saw the music yeah. magic being held there. You can see the crowd that has gathered here. This is all the Indian cuisine that's being served out. Yeah, I know. see the cameraman, TV crews gathered here to cover this incident. Lots of policemen on guard. The area has been cordoned off, as you can see. The person has been driven away in that police van. Loud cheering from his group members. September 2004. I'm on my way to Dover today. Look at the city. Starting off from the Victoria Terminus. We are at the Victoria Port Station. The different departure gates. And that's the coach.
just reached Dover. This is Dover Docks from where the, you get ferries to go to France. Across the sea is uh, Calais, which is in France. This side is Dover and the other side is Calais. This is Dover Docks. in front of my son view as it is called looks like a church we find out the history about this place strong breeze blowing all the temperature is around 18 or 19 degrees That's the town hall behind this memorial. That's the cathedral. It's the parish church of St. Mary the Virgin. And I'm right now standing on Cannon Street. This is how it looked. Street taking shape in 1895. I'm now standing on the market square. That's the market square. Right in the middle. That's Dover Museum. That's the Dover Castle. The market square where we had been was once a harbour during the Roman period and this is one of the other remnants of the Roman period that's the Roman painted house and its huge garden which all dates back to the Roman period you can see the walls dating back to probably the 3rd or the 4th century AD That's the view of the Dover Castle on the top of the hill. There's one of the two surviving lighthouses. The other one is on the side opposite to where I'm standing, behind me rather. And uh, these lighthouses during the Roman periods used to guide the ships into the harbour, which is the market square on which I'm standing right now. That's the Roman painted house which is surviving from the Roman period 1800 years ago
initially it was a priory. So it's around 900 AD. It's now the Dover College. But there is an Anglo-Saxon church and before that a Roman lighthouse. Both still of the Western Heights. Not the dedicated to painted house, but a fascinating area. Now just before we do, I must bore you a little bit more about the painted house. Very soon we're going to drive through the outer defense of the Western Heights. There are something like eight kilometers of ditches. Well, the sea from here is France. On a clear day, one can see the coast of France, but not today. It's very cloudy. We are now on the Western Heights, as it is called, from where you have the Grand Shaft, which uh, consists of three staircases, which runs down to the harbour. Those are the ferry terminals. One of the ships ready for departure. One pulling into. When Richard II was on the throne in the 14th century, a moated structure was built here, but it was Henry VIII who built the Archcliff Fort. It was strengthened at the time of the Spanish Armada, and eventually it became the headquarters of the Royal Engineers in the early 1800s. Here it is, on the right. And another great U.S. White Cliffs of Dover and the Castle. They really were in the front line here. Now, when we go around the next traffic line, keep looking across the naughty side of town. We are on Union Street now, which was built across what was known as the Elizabeth. Great cruise liners come into the western dock behind us. Many of their passengers come down to the Churchill. Dover is the main port for visiting cruise liners in the UK. Apart from enjoying the luxury of the church and hotel, there is a wonderful shopping opportunity here. The walk along the Wellington Dock. Except Sunday, which is 11 to 5. We could pick you up later here with all your parcels. Make sure you know the time of the last bus from here today. Oh. Oh. Yeah. This is all schwarz. Yeah, you can see here. Ah, da, da. Da, da. Go there. Excellent docks now. But in normal times, we'd have been swimming in the sea right here. Town walls and 500 years left. The right and the white cliff to the background. The moment. We are going to turn the corner and get a wonderful view of the famous white cliffs of Dover any minute now. But the reason to blow us is the ferry port. It's difficult to imagine what this harbour looks like during the war, especially in May 1940, the evacuation of Dunkirk. In just ten days, three I mean, just how much the troops longed to see these white cliffs again after being away at the which really became a symbol of England. It was a song sung by Vera Lynn that brought to everyone's mind and put his head Look, I don't know. I'm on the city side saying two rocked over on an open top bus. Coming up on the right is the entrance of the Duke of York's villages. The Duke always sees the British court private. That's enough about warfare. Let's enjoy the countryside. Thank you. 
The precious chalk downlands in this area are maintained by the National Trust. They charge to park here, but as we are on the city sites, ask the driver for directions. See the cars moving in, they drive it there on their way to the other side. That's France and that great ship. It's Terminal 2 on the left hand side and Terminal 3 on the right hand side. Was pulling out, yeah. ready to depart from Terminal 5 ah, on its way to France. That's the ship, Sea France. Let's exit or go. These fortifications were built around 300-400 years ago to protect Dover from French invasions. There would be frequent clashes between the English and the French. Sand dunes or sand hills, and 